This recording will go over the pediatrics nursing syllabus. You're required to read the syllabus on your own, but there are just a couple things that I wanted to point out to you. Um, so again, this course is pediatric nursing. There is a preceptorship uh, that goes along with it. You have my contact information provided there. The course description, I'm gonna let you look at on your own. You got your required textbooks. Um, we're also going to be using the ATI Nursing Care of Children book. So you want to make sure that you have that. I believe it's a blue ATI Nursing Care of Children textbook. The grading scale is the same for all of your nursing courses. You have to get the 78% or higher in order to pass the course, and there's no rounding. I'm going to let you look at your outcomes on your own. In terms of class performance, there's three written or three exams that you'll be taking and as of right now those exams will be taken on campus and each exam is worth 50 points. There is no uh, comprehensive final exam so each exam will just cover new material. Unannounced quizzes may be given as um, necessary, no makeup quizzes. Other assignments uh, may be made as deemed necessary by the instructor. The growth and development paper is worth 20 points and that's due week four at the beginning of class and when you submit it if you could submit it with a copy of the grading rubric and I'll have a different recording that will go over specifics of the growth and development paper. The safety poster presentation in this case it's going to be a safety PowerPoint presentation is worth 10 points and that's due week six. Clinical journals should be submitted the same week as the clinical experience. So when you meet with your preceptor, you'll do a journal entry similar to what you do for your med surge uh, clinicals using the KSA format. And you need to submit those uh, shortly after you actually do the, the preceptor time. So don't wait till the end of class and submit them all. You need those submitted uh, as you complete your hours. Professional points, 10 points worth 1% of total grade. There is an ATI proctored exam at the end of the semester where you could earn a point or two points. As with all nursing courses, the exam is worth 95% of the grade, non-exams and quizzes worth 4% and professionalism worth 1%. You will be assigned ATI child assessment videos and you need to watch those uh, weekly and keep on top of those. I'll have another recording that will show you how to access those videos. All test failures must be remediated. All students who must remediate must do so within two weeks of exam date and submit completed remediation prior to the next exam. The student will not be permitted to take the next exam until the remediation is submitted. If the student is unable to take the exam as scheduled due to not submitting remediation, remediation must be submitted the day of the exam. And the student must make arrangements with the instructor to take the exam within 24 hours in the testing center. Taking the exam late will result in a 5% grade deduction due to late examination. If the exam is not taken within 24 hours of the scheduled exam, the student will receive a grade of zero for the exam. In terms of the course requirement, uh, the student must ach achieve an overall C average on all tests, quizzes, and written assignments. Complete all assignments at a satisfactory level. So anything that's assigned has to be completed. Um, even if it doesn't like the journals, they don't have a point value associated with them, but it is a requirement of the course that you complete the journal. So anything that's assigned has to be submitted and completed at a satisfactory level. Completion of all assigned clinical or preceptor hours at a satisfactory level. Um, and I will have another recording that specifically addresses the preceptorships. Uh, completion of the HI pra practice nursing care of children exam by week seven and the proctored nursing care of children exam on week eight. Again, there's no rounding of any grades. There'll be math on every exam. Evaluation of the preceptor performance will be a satisfactory or unsatisfactory grade. If you're going to be absent for a scheduled on-campus exam, you'd want to let me know at least one hour before the absence. Absence for a scheduled exam will result in a 5% deduction in grade. A makeup test must be scheduled and completed in the Academic Service Center within 24 hours. Students must make up an must make an appointment in the testing center and failure to complete the makeup test within 24 hours would result in a grade of zero. It is the student's responsibility to access Canvas and Terra.edu emails daily 
to read communications from the instructor and program administrator, especially with the course being changed to um, online delivery. You want to be sure that you're checking in on Canvas and looking for emails and looking for announcements on a daily basis. A 5% deduction in grade per day will be taken for any late, accept, late assignments not accepted after three days, days late. And you are expected to read all assigned readings prior to watching um, any recorded lectures. Be sure to remember to bring your calculator to all exams. Uh, students are expected to follow and will be held accountable for information and policies in the handbook. Uh, test review, I have to um, think about how we're going to do that with the new circumstances. So I'll have to get back to you about um, test review and how that will happen um, with the students only being on campus for testing on testing days. And just a reminder on testing days, you'll have to park in parking lot B and come in through building B um, to get signed in and get your temperature taken. So please plan on coming a little early on testing days because there is a check-in procedure that will occur in building B before you can come to your classroom. Um, if you're late, for the exam. Unfortunately, you, it's like any other tardy that once the door closes, you won't be allowed to test. You'd have to make arrangements at, at the with me and the Academic Service Center and have the 5% deduction. So look in here. If you have any questions about any of the nursing policies, please let me know. You can look over those on your own. At the end of the syllabus, there is the rubric for the for the health promotion growth and development paper. Um, I just want you to know at this point that there is the rubric for the paper there that's at the back of the syllabus. There'll be a separate recording that will specifically address the growth and development paper. But when you're writing your paper, please have the rubric next to you and make sure that you're addressing each of these um, areas to ensure that you get full points. Because if you totally just miss out a section, you, you'll get no partial credit. You don't get any of those points. Um, and those I'll have you submit electronically. I'll need you to submit the paper along with a rubric, a blank rubric for grading. Um, and again, there'll be a separate recording that will give you a little bit more information about that. As with the growth and development paper, the rubric for the PowerPoint, the safety PowerPoint presentation is at the back of the syllabus also. So the same thing when you're working on this project, have the rubric out, make sure that you're addressing everything correctly. Um, this previously had been a poster presentation. And due to the change to online, uh, the online course, it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation that you'll submit. Um, I'll probably set up a discussion board where people can view, submit their, their PowerPoints, and everyone can view each other's. Um, again, I'll have another recording that will address the specifics of the safety PowerPoint presentation so that if you have to review, you only want to get information about the PowerPoint. You don't have to listen to the whole syllabus explanation. Again, you can sort of focus in on what you have questions about. And then finally, at the back of the syllabus is your schedule, starting with week one. And again, it's an eight-week class going through week eight. With eight-week classes, if you think you need to withdraw, um, that would be week five is the deadline for withdrawing for week for uh, eight-week courses. So. If for any reason you're having trouble or something's going on, you need, you're considering withdrawing, please make sure that you contact me to discuss it um, or contact Mrs. Penhose. So looking at your schedule, if it's in blue, it's an ATI book. And I use the ATI book for the different developmental chapters. So if you look, ATI chapter three, is deals with infant development. ATI Chapter 4 deals with toddler development. I do not provide any lecture over these chapters. What I am going to require you to do is you look them over on your own, and then for each one assigned, you have to complete an ATI template, the growth and development template that's found at the back of the ATI book or online on ATI, and you're going to submit those the following week. So you see this week you're required to um, read ATI chapters 3 and 4, Infant and Toddler Development. And by next week, you the, the ATI Active Learning Templates, the Growth and Development Templates for Infant and Toddlers will be due, and I'll set up a Dropbox for those. These templates are to serve as study guides for you, okay? Um, 
I'm looking at them to make sure that they're done and they're complete, but really they're, the purpose of them is to serve as a study guide for you, for you to review the information in the book and then create your own template or study guide to, to help you out when you're studying. Your first exam will be March 31st. Again, that will be on campus in our scheduled classroom, which let me try and remember where that was. D102, so we'll be in our scheduled classroom at 1230. And, oops, where am I going? So March 31st, 31st, D102 at our normal scheduled class time, 1230, your exam would begin. Okay. Each week, since this is uh, going to be an online course, I will post prior to the scheduled class time a weekly plan. So it'll go into what chapters we're covering that week. It will have links to online recorded lectures or any sort of informational videos. It will spell out for you what the homework is and when it is due. Um, so hopefully it'll provide clear guidance as we go along as to what is expected each week, week by week, um, so that everyone's on the same page. There is a discussion board that I opened up. If you have questions about anything related to the course, whether it's the preceptorship, the content, preparing for an exam, anything at all, there's a discussion board that has been posted for questions. And you can ask it there because likely if you have a question, someone else has the same question. At the same time, you can always email me, uh, give me 24 hours to respond to any emails or discussion board postings. So if we have a test on Tuesday at 1230, don't email me or message me on Tuesday at 8 a.m. or even Tuesday at 8 p.m. I'm sorry, Monday at 8 p.m. because I have that 24 hour window in order to get back to you. I just put a little disclaimer here, additional weekly assignments. Uh, will likely be made. The posted weekly plan that I talked about will list all required work with due dates. Okay, so that was a brief overview of the syllabus. Again, you're required to review it in its entirety on your own, and if you have any questions, uh, please let me know.